going to play for you um, a very small piece, but it has a big story. This is a piece which um, sprang from probably my only piece of music, which sprang from a life-threatening situation. <laughs> the, um, the challenge I undertook in uh, December 2006 is probably known to some of you. It was to walk the overland track with a small harp in my back. I say a small harp because um, recently going on the radio, I've had people make assumptions about the, um, the size of the harp that I was carrying on my back. <laughs> But I have to say, if I had been taking a harp such as this, I would have, you know, had, I don't know, um, helicopters to bring it in and everything. So when you think about it, it was actually more of a challenge to take a small one, because I had to carry it on my back the whole way. And um, it was a 19-string harp, and very much uh, a folk harp. It was actually lent to me by a student in Launceston. And um, this was... Um, Probably one of the pivotal decisions in my life was to walk the overland track for several reasons. <laughs> and on the first day that uh, we set off, our group, I might, um, I must admit, had dwindled from about ten people who'd agreed to go to on the day three, three of us went. And um, on the day that we set off, it was December 11th, and as we were beginning the walk, there was a bushwalkers alert. Now, we were just so excited about the day. Oh, bushwalkers alert. Oh, what's that? You know, it doesn't really matter. You know, this is, this is, this is December. <laughs> and four hours into the walk, we were in a, full, a fully blown blizzard. And there were gale force winds. I could not see. There were, all I could see in front of me was horizontal lines of snow moving very quickly. <laughs> and um, this was um, worsened by the fact that this harp, though not particularly heavy, was actually quite large. And on the back of my very large pack, which was quite big on me to begin with because I'm not very tall, I now had about this much extra width and this much extra on the back. So I had actually become a sail. <laughs> and I was being lifted <laughs> by the winds. And though that wasn't so bad when we were kind of going in and out of um, gullies and uh, trees and such, when we actually got up to um, nearing Cradle Mountain, it's called Cradle Cirque, and we get up to Marion's lookout after climbing a chain up the side of a mountain, you, there aren't any more trees. And you know that you're going to have to walk for in... Uh, in some people's case, two hours, in mine about six, <laughs> in, across an area with no trees and nothing to shelter you whatsoever. So when we got up to that point and I had been thrown over and it took some dramatic moments for my two companions <laughs> to actually pull me up using their walking sticks, we began to reassess, continuing along. And then we realized that turning back was proving equally dangerous because the winds were picking up and my sail was proving to be very effective. And so we made the rather heartbreaking decision that um, the harp was going to have to be left behind. So we took the harp off my pack and wrapped it in the pack cover and said a tearful farewell and placed it under a tiny bit of scrub, which was the only shelter we could find and then headed back down to spend the night in um, more civilised accommodation until the um, blizzard was over. And I was actually okay with it up till about one in the morning when I woke up in my cabin in a cold sweat realising that I had left someone else's harp on a mountain in a blizzard under the snow <laughs> all night. <laughs> And um, <clears throat> so the next day, was, uh, there was quite a lot of anticipation and the day was beautiful and sunny and you would never have known that it had been so unpleasant the day before, of course, it's Tasmania. <laughs> and we climbed, we made a dramatic climb again up to the same place and the whole way I'm, oh no, please Lord, let the heart be okay, going up the mountain. And finally we saw it, it had been pulled out from the scrub and examined by some curious walker. 
And um, we found out later that actually a whole tour group had, had, had gone past and had, had, had inspected it and been quite curious about why a harp would be lying on it. <laughs> but at any rate, when I, I was sure that it would be, I was sure that it would be completely destroyed. I mean, I've... In, you know, in giving my students um, care instructions for harp, I've always said to avoid extreme temperatures, and um, this was fairly extreme. So I took the harp out of the pack and I was just so amazed to find that it was absolutely and in completely perfect condition. And it, it was amazing because when we um, got a little further, I actually began to play it, and I was just about to retune it. Um, because I thought, oh, it's going to be in a really, it's going to be completely out of tune, very, very, very strange. When I realised that it had actually tuned itself to a really interesting mode. And I began to play on this harp, and this is what it said. <laughs> Thank you. 